Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And if you are new to this channel, I create daily breakthrough videos that will help you use repetition plus emotion to reprogram your subconscious mind with new insights, ideas, and shares. And please, if you haven't already, hit the notification and subscribe bell below. So in today's video, I want to share with you a little bit about this idea of how a dismissive avoidant changes once they become secure, but what traits they really seem to keep. We talk a lot in another video about how, um, and I'll put the link to that video down below, but about how a dismissive avoidant um, can shift and what patterns they shift out of as they become secure. But I want to share in this video what qualities they tend to hang on to. I just want to let you know super quick as well. We are doing for the entire month of May, and this will be a one-off, a 14-day free trial to access all of the courses at PDS. So if you are a DA or a loved one of a DA and you want to understand the path to becoming more secure, I highly recommend you join using the link below. You get access to all of our courses for 14 days, and I recommend starting off with our Dismissive Avoidant Reprogramming course or our Discover, Embrace, and Fulfill Your Personal Needs course, which can really help the DA get more in touch with their needs and also their interdependent needs, like needs from other individuals in their life. So as many of you know, I have this beautiful blessing of being able to watch people go through these major transformations on a regular basis and be a sort of facilitator of that. But really, as I've always said, you know, it takes the, the person really showing up and doing that inner work and like you know, it, it's them doing the heavy lifting. I can only ever really share tools and information. Um, but I've been so proud to see so many dismissive avoidance come through PDS and heal and become secure and become super vulnerable and really like open themselves and share and change. Um, and then also, as many of you may know, I um, my husband is a, a dismissive avoidant who has now become much more securely attached as well. I would say it's probably like as secure as it comes at this point, but um, anyways, so, and also if you are interested at all, um, he and myself may actually create a podcast together. Um, we've been gathering some questions in the background for it and setting up a little recording area for it. So hopefully that can be something where we just take like a whole bunch of questions that people keep sending to us. If you have questions for that, please put them in the, the, um, comments below and, and we'll do a deep dive into all that stuff. Anyways. So in this video, we're going to talk about the characters and characteristics and traits dismissive avoidance tend to hold on to as they become a lot more securely attached. So a lot of people will wonder like when a DA becomes secure or if somebody is a dismissive avoidant and they're starting their journey towards becoming securely attached, they'll be like, how much will I change? And am I going to lose all parts of my personality? And it can be sort of a scary feat when we don't really understand what's on the other side, but we keep our personality traits for the most part. Like we, you know, maybe some things will, will soften. So for example, if I think of like myself and I used to be very FA and, you know, I, I was very sweet, but then if I got mad, I would get really, really mad. And like, that's much softer now within me, obviously. Um, if something bothers me or upsets me, like I will more easily communicate it. So there will be certain things like that where we may have like an extreme for version of an unhealthy program or behavioral pattern that is magnified kind of more so as a result of trauma. And you'll see those things really soften, but a lot of our characteristics and personality traits will keep because so much of what PDS does and the tools that we have are like, Hey, these are here to help you reprogram what's not serving you, but then keep what is. And so there's no need to like reprogram your personality traits. It's just a reprogramming of the maladaptive behaviors we've acquired as a result of attachment trauma. So what I'll see generally with dismissive avoidance is they become a lot more open and much more available, um, much more like support supportive and present and conscientious and caring. And it's almost like they feel safe to express that care externally, but they may still have those characteristics or traits where they tend to be a little more private, maybe a little bit more reserved of personalities. Um, sometimes they are a bit slower to recognize their feelings and still focus more on that logical approach, but you'll see dismissive avoidance feel like when they do recognize their feelings, it's a lot quicker than it used to be. It's, they're a lot more aware of exactly what's going on and they feel really comfortable opening up, being vulnerable and sharing with somebody something that's on their mind. Now, some of the, how quickly we recognize feelings can also be based on like some of our MBTI type stuff. Um, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole too much right now, um, but that's the Myers-Briggs type indicator test if you've ever um, been interested in any of that content and how we sort of how our different different cognitive functions process information um, but 
Um, there will still sometimes be a bit of a more logical approach and take on things, um, sometimes a little bit more private, like not necessarily super like attention seeking and wanting to put all, you know, themselves too out there. Of course, we can have more social DAs who are a little bit more extroverted for sure, but we'll see there's, there's more balance in their ability to access their feelings and take the logical approach. And there's sort of a harmony between those two sides of, of themselves as individuals, because through doing some deeper inner work, they tend to um, be able to embody more of those feelings a little bit more often and be more vulnerable and feel safer speaking up. This is another really beautiful thing that happens with DAs is they start feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm, it's okay. It's, it's healthy and safe and correct for me to take up space and to have feelings in my relationship to other people, in my interactions with other people. What we see before is a dismissive avoidant who feels like, oh, I can't express my feelings to anybody or my needs to anybody anyways. So I'll go meet my needs and nurture myself. And then what a relationship requires for me is for me to go meet other people's needs. And so it's this automatic, like one way street. It's like this, this imbalance that's there versus as the securely attached person or the DA who's become more securely attached heals, they actually feel safe saying, hey, I have needs from a relationship too, because now they embody healthy interdependency in a relationship, which is a really, really powerful thing. Um, and the other thing I would say too, is because dismissive avoidance are not shaming themselves so often, which is a really powerful part of their healing, which is like really offering the self um, through repetition and emotion, a lot more self-acceptance. They are able to extend that acceptance to other people, but they are also able to understand criticism or you know, critical approaches from other people as being maybe more about that person and what they're going through and, and then being triggered or charged and less so about big, horrible, awful character flaws and the dismissive avoidance themselves, which is not what they have. And that's not what I'm saying, but they tend to, before doing some of that inner work, believe that about themselves at a subconscious level, because one of their biggest core wounds is I am defective. So often they like carry this idea with them. And then criticism seems to be the catalyst for that concept um, and then they emote all of the shame according to that. But as they become more secure, they can set boundaries around criticism in a healthy way, let somebody know um, what's okay for them or not, or suggest somebody a specific approach that's taken in terms of communication, or if they just have a critical person in their life, like a boss, and there's not much you can do about it in the short term um, future, then they're able to really not take it so personally. And it allows them to grow better from that, um, be more focused, be more present, be more attuned. So you'll see in summary that some of the major quality, qualities or characteristics a dismissive avoidant tends to keep is their logical orientation a lot of the time. Um, they tend to stay like grounded and quite practical people. Again, this is not every DA ever, but there's a strong correlation. Um, and they tend to sometimes be a little bit more private and reserved and sort of keep some of those dynamics about them but then where they open is in terms of their communication their belief they can take up space and have needs from other people in relationships and feel comfortable and safe communicating them and they also tend to feel like um you know they can receive in a kind way and they tend to be much more giving as well as they become more secure because they come out of that state of lack and fear and then they also tend to be um, much better at receiving and, and working through any criticism that comes from external sources if there's no control over it or if there is they also feel comfortable saying hey can you change your approach like in a romantic relationship it's much easier to do obviously than with like somebody in the workplace that's your boss or superior, but they tend to have a really healthy way of not taking it so personally, but also setting boundaries or communicating as needed from a place of confidence and, and feeling like they're deserving to do so. So anyways, I hope that makes a whole lot of sense. Let me know any questions you have in the comments below. Any podcast questions, um, if my husband and I end up doing a weekly or bi-weekly episode. And that is it for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.